writing always has been a passion of mine, but um, I remember when I was little I used to always have notebooks with little scribblings of different story ideas and different stories in it. Um, but until about a year and a half ago I wasn't really serious about it, but now that I've published my first book, self-published it, things have really taken off and I could definitely see this as a career instead of just a hobby. I actually put this in another video of mine in the dedications of Dark Crown. I, um, I have stated that one author in particular stood out to me and she encouraged me nonstop to keep going and to keep writing. Um, Cameo Renee has greatly inspired me to continue writing. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't know what is considered orthodox for writing. Um, all I know is when I write I have to have background noise, either music or another TV show, and food, <laughs> um, drinks, stuff like that. It's very, I guess, how to put it, it's a very distracting workplace, but I do well with it. Yes, I totally agree with the quote. Um, I'm not a very good writer, but I'm an excellent rewriter. In my opinion, first drafts don't matter. What matters is what you do with that first draft and how you reshape it to be what you want other people to read. Out of all of the books and stories that I've written, I believe Finding Hope, I have the best connection with. Um, the reason behind that is I know many people who have been bullied and who have been considered suicidal and who have wanted to take their own lives and um, I just wanted to reach out to them and let them know that no matter what they're feeling they are not alone. There are thousands of people who feel the same way but if I can make a difference any way possible in their lives that maybe that they would change their minds and maybe they'd have a little bit of hope and encouragement to continue on. Um, I hate seeing my friends like that and I'm always here for them no matter what. I think out of all of my antagonists I have a bit of a connection with all of them and I'm a lot like all of them. Um, they like con to control situations and have power over it and not let anyone say they can't do something or they can't have something and I think in a way everyone's a little like that. I think out of all of my protagonists, I am most like Emmeline from Dark Crown. It is yet to be published, but she is a firm believer in what she sees and what she knows exists. So when she's whisked away into a fantasy land with elves and magic, she kind of doesn't believe any of it. And I have a feeling I'd be the exact same way. I'd be doubtful of everything that had to do with that. I believe it has. <clears throat> I believe on the way to publication it has taught me how to um, put in more details, how to describe things better, how to um, emote my characters more, um, as well as how to finish a story. Um, I think that was my biggest problem. I didn't have enough encouragement to finish a story or I'd run out of an idea and it would just meet a roadblock, one that I couldn't get around. But um, after I published my first book I realized I can do this and there are thousands of people who really can do this and if I can get out to them and encourage them then maybe they could do it as well.
yes and no. Um, it has expanded my view on what books I could write, what story ideas I could pursue, but at the same time, I know what they're looking for, but on the other hand, I'm not one to follow very many rules. So, <laughs> it's like, I try to please them, but at the same time, my number one priority is putting out something that I like the most. It does to a point. Um, I'd sit there and I'd think, well, should I self-publish this one or should I publish it with the company that I work with and that I know a little about? Or which way would sell better? Um, which way would get it out better? But overall, it doesn't matter to me as long as it's out there for people. I believe Lost in Wonderland has been the most difficult to write. Um, it's been co-authored with Mags Knoll, and it's not usual. It's a dark and twisted Alice in Wonderland, but that's what's concerning to me. We are in the process of rewriting it, so it's more detailed and it's expanded and more emotions and just overall better. But there's already been, of course, your first Alice in Wonderland, the classic, and then there's been a whole lot of other remakes, and then the Once Upon a Time in Wonderland. Um, so there's just so much Alice in Wonderland that it's hard to come up with something new and unusual and something that the readers will enjoy um, as well. I believe the easiest has been Worlds Apart, working with Morgan Middleton. Um, she's just been an amazing co-author and an amazing supporter as well. Um, she came into writing the book with me and we had a base idea, but she helped and she turned it around and made it even more extraordinary than I could have ever imagined it to be. So I'm very thankful for her as well. Personally, I don't write fan fictions anymore, um, but I can see them as a good way to get started. Um, if you have a fan fiction and you have all your characters and you have a new plot twist and ideas like that, you could always take it and replace the characters with your own characters um, and make it your own story idea. Um, I think fan fictions aren't bad. It all depends on how well they're written, um, how well the plot twist is and things like that. But I think it's a very good start to a writing career. I would love for my writing career to take me very high. However, I'm not setting my expectations too high. I'm only self-published at the moment, but I don't want to be let down by it. But at the same time, yes, I would love for it to take me beyond belief. If I could actually go back in time and give myself, my younger self, a piece of advice, it would be finished one story earlier than I did. Um, my first book was published February of last year, and I would have loved to have a book out sooner than that. So advice to everyone is to keep writing, and you'll finish one thing eventually. I believe the fact that most of my books, well, nearly all of my books are fantasy is what draws the readers in. It's an escape from reality. It's something they, they can use as a place to go 
and be themselves. When they read my fantasy books, I want them to walk away with a sense of wonder and amazement at the fact that there's this whole world out there and they can explore it. There's more to life than they think there is, even if it's not a made-believe fantasy world that I created. Um, when they read Finding Hope and soon to come out Saving Grace, I want them to realize that words and actions do affect people and how they feel and they could make a change in the world if they really wanted to and if they took the time. Um, pay it forward, do something nice for one person and they're more than likely to do something nice for someone else. I'd like to give a big shout out to Zara Elise Thelms for giving me the questions to answer in this interview. Um, I will leave a link to her YouTube channel in the comments or description, sorry. Um, I also gave her interview questions so she could do the same thing. So check it out. See you around.